Good morning to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is November 20th, 2019, and I got out to the Outer Banks Friday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This is the sixth day, really the fifth day. I got out really late Friday night. So the fifth day that I have been in Rodanthe, uh, the coastal storm had quite an impact out here, and it looks like they're finally going to be able to reopen Highway 12. That's the narrow, very vulnerable corridor that leads down south of Oregon Inlet and connects the Outer Banks all together. Um, they had a lot of sand and water on the road and... You know, a Herculean effort by the NC Department of Transportation to get that reopened. Looks like that'll happen later today so I can get home and get a shower. Uh, there's no running water at the house that we're staying at. They winterize it, and so the water gets shut off so that there's no problems in the wintertime. And so it is, it's, it's time to get a shower. That is for sure. So look, there's some things happening in the tropics. Uh, here's a quick, you know, reminder of, I don't, I'm not stranded. When you do this kind of work, and you get stranded, that means you did something wrong. I am stuck out here that I can't leave, but I'm not stranded. I've got supplies. We have an Internet connection. I'm out here with uh, Tony, uh, my friend and colleague from Wilmington. He's with me as well. Um, but we're stuck. You're not allowed to leave. At least that's what the DOT and the Sheriff's Department told us. I don't argue with that, so there you go. But this is what it said earlier. Hoping to open Highway 12 in our saga will come to an end. But um, we're not, it's fine. It's just annoying when you can't leave, even though your vehicle is capable of leaving. Let's just put it that way. But as they say, respect authority, and we do that. All right, in the Atlantic, Sebastian. The models were showing this several days ago, and here it is. It is a bona fide tropical storm. It's not, you know, debatable. Well, they're just naming stuff. Nope, it's true. It's a tropical storm. In fact, winds are up to 50 miles per hour. It's a late season storm. I mean, the, the season's over in 10 days. What do you expect? So this is doing pretty good considering it's late in the season. There's the wind field with the uh, oranges color there. It's going to head off to the northeast with time. Might get a little bit stronger. Some of the intensity guidance, believe it or not, because it's moving with the flow, suggesting that it could become better coupled uh, the circulation and the convection, etc., and become a hurricane. That's not out of the realm of possibility here. And if it does so, it could send some swells, and it probably will as it is now, down towards the islands here. So maybe an increase in swell coming in from the northeast, and that is it. There will be no other implications or ramifications or impacts or whatever. You folks in Bermuda, not too much of a worry. Maybe some swells up your way. And that's uh, the extent of it. So a late season storm, 18 named storms now. Sebastian makes it. And a rare event to get down to the S on the list of names, but we did it this year. Quite a number of the storms this year were very short-lived. It looks like Sebastian will buck that trend and live a few more days. Remember, Amelda was like, what, 12 hours or something like that? Other systems, Nestor um, was a short-lived system. But this is truly tropical over, well, that's a terrible line. Let's make that thicker. Over the Atlantic here, uh, just into the subtropics, I guess you'd call it. I don't know. It's not in the subtropics. Tony, what's the subtropics? Where does that start, in your opinion? <laughs> it's about 25, yeah. to, 25 to 35 north. Yeah, well, it's at 20 north and some change, so it's not quite subtropics. Um, but there's the satellite imagery of it. There's the front coming that's going to help sweep it all up and out to sea, even more so than it is. Uh, all the flow here generally westerly in the northern hemisphere right now. And this is the last holdout of the 2019 hurricane season. Now, in the Pacific, we had Raymond the other day, and its leftover energy is up here. There's an upper-level storm coming down through California. All this is combining to give quite a stormy pattern out west. Thunderstorms flooding uh, in Arizona, Nevada, the mountains, the Wasatch Range there in Utah. Um, boy, I would love to just teleport out there and be a part of all that. But I'm in Rodanthe on the North Carolina Outer Banks. I can't do it. But, you know, there will be more. But that's a pretty stormy pattern, and that will continue on for the next day or so. And the snowpack, the water content, etc., you guys need it. 
So that's a good thing. So after Sebastian, that'll do it. The hurricane season will be over. And then we will start looking ahead to next year. Uh, you know, after the NCAA tournament gets over in basketball and ESPN has the way too early top 25 or whatever that they do just for fun. Well, that's just for fun, literally for sports fans like me. I like college basketball. But in the world of meteorology, it's not just for fun. We have a good time tracking this stuff. We're weather geeks. We take it very seriously. We know the ramifications of intense weather and what it can do. We understand all that. So we do look ahead. What are the weather patterns going to be like down the road? And with technology and computer modeling, ensemble predictions, etc., there is the ability to at least get a glimpse of the future. And you know how much I like Ben Knoll. Ben Knoll Weather, move my face out of the way of his face, um, tweeted this earlier, that the El Nino-like pattern that we're seeing, and it is kind of an El Nino out there right now, even though not officially from the Climate Prediction Center, whatever, the atmosphere and the ocean are kind of behaving like it. Uh, that will continue into early 2020, he says, and that does pique his interest about the latter half of winter for the northeast United States. Ben has ties, very strong ties to the Hudson Valley, so there's a big connection there. For us that watch the tropics, this is very important because you see what happens here January through February. There's March, and then finally April. Look what goes on in the tropical Pacific. In fact, let's get rid of my face Get rid of the telestration. Click on this if it'll let me. Come on. It's not going to let me. It will let me click on it, but I don't want to enlarge it. There's April 2020. And look at the Pacific here. By the way, this is the ECMWF anomaly. Departures from normal. That's a La Nina look. And it's not too darn cold. Well, it's maybe in the MDR there a little bit. But that's a. when we look ahead to next April, if this verifies... Some seasonal forecasts next year that get issued in April could be very interesting, put it that way. So our attention will shift from this and this, which is our, you know, now casting, if you will, what's happening now. This will go down to nothing because there'll be nothing happening in the tropics per se, at least in the Atlantic basin. And we'll focus more on the future. And we have tools to do that. So. Stick around on the YouTube channel. It's not like at the end of November, everything goes away. Hardly the case. All right, so what's the future of Sebastian look like? Uh, 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. If we move this out into time, see what I mean? It looks really healthy there on the GFS. I mean, that vorticity signature, that's, that's a potent looking storm system. And it wouldn't surprise me if this becomes a hurricane. It moves on out well to the east of Bermuda, which is right there. And so a couple of things could happen if it does become a hurricane. It'll last longer. I mean, this is only 54 hours, but you know, Amelda was like 6 to 12. Come on. And it'll add a few more ace points. And maybe we'll get over 130 for the year. I was thinking we'd be at about 150 back in August. I will miss that mark. But... Uh, 130 is pretty respectable. And the ACE, what is that? That is the accumulated cyclone energy. The best way to think of that is how well does, like a basketball season, the Chicago Bulls, the LA Lakers, whoever, uh, how well do they do in an average game? And if they're a good, solid team, they usually have a pretty high average. Whatever, 85, 95 points a game. Whereas a more Less talented team may average 65, 75 points a game. Does that make sense? So you have a lot of players on the team. If they're not scoring a lot of points, the accumulative total and the average is not very high. That's what we think of as ace. We've had 18 named storms, an ace of 130. You'd expect it to be a little bit higher near that 150 mark for 18 named storms. So it shows you that out of those 18 named storms, some of them weren't hitting their three-pointers. Does that make sense? I hope so. That's a simple way to put it. So we'll watch and see. Like I said, there's the pattern uh, for Sebastian. That just looks like it gets energized with the flow. A little bit of baroclinic interaction with the trough there. I'm going to be a betting man. Um, Tony put me down. $10 says it becomes a hurricane. 
All right? Will do. Vegas odds. Look at this. That's a nice ridge over Florida. More tweets from Eric Blake coming up probably and uh, Brian McNoldy about how hot it is in South Florida because that is a stout ridge in the mid-levels over the Gulf of Mexico centered right over Florida as we head over the next couple of days. And the storm track over the lower 48 will be to the north of that, obviously. Just something to point out. Speaking of lower 48 weather, this is the GFS um, CONUS, as they call it, or CONUS, whatever. The lower 48, this is the way I prefer it. And this is what it looks like now. Green is rain, blue is snow, and ice generally. Well, Levi has it coated as pink and orange and red for ice, but you get the idea. Stormy out west over here. Decent in the east, no problems. What about next week? Thanksgiving coming up. Travel. Storm systems cutting across the nation's midsection. There's Friday, Saturday. Storm system coming through the east there. Nothing major. And then the travel commences, right, for Thanksgiving week. And there's been some rumblings on social media of a big trough that digs in the nation's midsection and the potential for a monster winter storm. This is the 12Z. Uh, run of the GFS at a week out. And that's a pretty potent storm, 982 millibars cutting up across the Great Lakes region through parts of Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. But just to give you an idea, this is what the uh, 0Z GFS showed uh, last night. And that, 978 over eastern Kansas, I call that a land cane. You know, if you had a 978 millibar hurricane, coming into South Florida, people would be kind of up in arms about it. That's potent. That's getting it. And 979 over, um, you know, near Kansas City or whatever, the center, those isobars, et cetera, that's wind and storminess down in the southeast quadrant. But that's a week out. This is going to come and go. And for travel's sake, we all better hope that it goes and doesn't become too strong in the short range because you talk about a nightmare for U.S. travel interests, that would do it right there. Right on through Wednesday, you would have Chicago uh, right here getting ready to get in on the action. And it's not just the fact that Chicago could be impacted directly so much as it is the air traffic coming into Chicago. Let me make sure the map is, yeah, that's Chicago, Illinois. Right there, Chicago region, maybe through Atlanta. Charlotte, that would be bad. Up the I-95 corridor, Dulles, Baltimore, and then eventually into New York and uh, Boston. Yeah, we don't need this to happen, trust me, because I hear that it's going to be one of the busiest travel seasons in recent memory because the economy is doing so great. All right, good for the economy. Sign up and become patrons now because you can, right? That's the pitch there. Uh, uh, it's just a little joke there. Um, but this would be terrible for travel and would have people sleeping in airports. We'll see what happens. The uh, 12Z today, a little bit more. Yeah, that's still rather potent for the uh, Great Lake states, but we'll see. That'll be something to watch very closely as we wind up the tropical season and start really paying attention to lower 48 weather even more. And at least I will be out of the Outer Banks. Don't get me wrong. We like it out here. It's nice, but it's time to go. i got work to do. I've got to be working on my podcast coming up. We have the Hurricane Highway web series that's going to debut for our patrons on Patreon in January. And, you know, I can't do all that sitting here at uh, this nice house in Rodanthe. i got to be home and do it there. So we're wrapping things up, be able to leave here in the next few hours finally. And that will be that. You guys have a great, I can't even talk, a great, have a great rest of your Wednesday. As always, thanks for tuning in on your side of the screen. I appreciate it. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again from back home in Wilmington tomorrow.